Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. I welcome you all to today's daily quiz session. I hope that all of you have been attending each and every session of the ongoing Target Prelims 2023. Today's session at 7:30 p.m. will be the fourth session for Indian Polity. Don't forget to attend that. Following that, we will start with Environment and Ecology from tomorrow. After that, we have Science and Tech, IR, Government Schemes, Art and Culture, etc. Make sure. Let's attend each and every session. These sessions are live, 7:30 to 9:30 p.m., where we will be discussing current affairs from the last 365 days in the form of MCQs that you can expect will be asked by the UPSC. Let's move on to the first question now. Which of the following are the correct nutritional requirements for midday meal scheme under National Food Security Act? Number one, protein quantity should be 15 to 20 grams. Fat quantity should be 18 to 21 grams, while carbohydrates should be 70 grams. How many of these given statements are wrong? Now it's a difficult question because usually we don't go into so much detail of these facts. The correct answer here is none of the statements is wrong. All these three are the exact nutritional requirements set by the government of India for the midday meal scheme per meal. The reason why we are asking this question is. that the government of india has revised nutritional standards in its food safety scheme for the kids the article here tells you that earlier the requirement was for 12 g of protein in the midday meal that has now been hiked to 15 to 20 g while the carbs have to be 70 g there is also requirement for micronutrients such as calcium zinc iron fiber vitamin a b etc so you can make a note of that as well also the article tells you that the government of india is planning to push early childhood care and education through 14 lakh anganwadi centers under poshan bhi padhai bhi slogan next question number 2 which of these are correctly matched the name of the mission and the country where they were carried out ganga yemen mission kaveri sudan mission devi shakti ukraine You have to tell which of these are matched incorrectly. You have to match the incorrect one and not the correct one. Now, if you look at this one by one, Kaveri is the mission that is in the news. This is correct. The Indian government is trying to bring as many Indians as possible back from Sudan. This is Mission Kaveri. Mission Ganga was the one that was carried out. to bring back people from ukraine who were struck in the ukraine russia war while mission devi shakti was to bring back people from afghanistan when the america withdrew in 2021 taliban took over so only the second one is correct first and third are incorrectly matched so the answer here would be a since you have to tell the incorrect one the reason why we are discussing this question is under operation kaveri The Ministry of External Affairs has brought back over 200 people from Sudan in another batch of this evacuation mission. Next question number three: Consider the following statements with regard to Sri Jagannath Puri Temple. First, Jagannath Puri Temple is called Yamanika Tirth, where, according to the Hindu beliefs, the power of Yam, the god of death, has been nullified in Puri due to the presence of Lord Jagannath. Second. This temple was called the White Pagoda and is a part of the Char Dham pilgrimage. Third, temple is believed to be constructed in the 12th century by King Anant Varman Cholganga Dev of the Western Ganga dynasty. Which of these given statements is or are correct? The correct answer here is A. One and two only are correct. The third one is wrong because this king, the King Anant Varman, belonged to the Eastern Ganga dynasty and not the Western Ganga dynasty. The other two statements, first and second, are correct. There is this news in the Indian Express newspaper today about the case of missing keys of the inner chamber of the temple, also known as a Ratna Bhandar. Many believe that there is a very, very high value treasure inside the Ratna Bhandar, but the gates have not been opened. Odisha High Court has recently given an order to the Odisha government. and they have asked the reply to the status of the judicial inquiry commission report about the keys of this inner ratna bhandar that is a treasure house a petition right now is being heard in the high court it was filed by social activist mr dilip baral as per the odisha pradesh congress committee since the archaeological survey of india as a custodian of the shrine 
द गवर्नमेंट शुड इमीजिएटली ओपन दिस भंडार सो दैट द ए एस आई कैन टेक द स्टॉक ऑफ द सेफ्टी एंड अंडरटेक द रिपेयर वर्क ऑफ दिस टेम्पल दिस रत्न भंडार ऑफ द ट्वेल्थ सेंचुरी श्राइन हैज एन आउटर एंड द इनर चेंबर द आउटर चेंबर हैज थ्री कीज एंड इट इज ओपन रेगुलरली टू फेच ऑर्नामेंट्स फॉर द डीटीज वेन एवर दे हैव टू बी डेकोरेटेड these three keys of the outer chamber are in custody of the royal family of puri which has been given the responsibility to look after the temple affairs the content of the inner chamber whose keys are missing are not in public domain but as per reports there may be a very very high value treasure inside the inner chamber next question number 4 which of the following statements is incorrect about trai first it consists of a chairman two whole time members and two part time members all of which are appointed by the government of india second the tri was established on 20th february 1997 as an executive agency third recommendations of tri are not binding upon the central government and fourth the trai act was amended in 2000 which established a telecommunications dispute settlement and appellate tribunal to take over the adjudicatory and disputes functions of trai you have to tell which of these is incorrect about this telecom regulatory authority of india the right answer here is b this is a statutory body this was formed in 1997 under the trai act only this is the same act that was amended in the year 2000 for establishment of this tribunal so second statement is wrong it is not an executive body as you know executive body is the one that is formed by just a order of the government on the other hand statutory bodies are those which are established after the act of the parliament the reason why it is in the news is that the try is likely to ask jio and airtel to remove their unlimited data plans from 5g that is because try thinks that they can be predatory meaning that they can force the other companies to lower their prices which is an unfair trade practice as you know ever since the 5g plans have been launched all the telecom companies are trying to attract as many customers towards their 5g services as possible and as a part of that marketing strategy both of these have offered unlimited data plans as well next is a previous year question from 2018 consider the following pairs towns that are sometime in the news with the country aleppo syria kirkuk yemen mosul palestine mazar e sharif of afghanistan which of these are correctly matched out of all of these one and four are the ones that are matched correctly second and third mosul and kirkuk both of these are in iraq both of these were in the news because these towns were occupied by the islamic state at that time when the question was asked aleppo in syria also was under influence of islamic state it had a lot of very important cultural heritage which was being destroyed Mazar-e Sharif in Afghanistan is one of those places where India has a consulate which was even attacked by the terrorists and the Indian government led by the prime minister even made a statement about this attack which had killed 140 soldiers in Mazar-e Sharif it was very close to the Indian consulate this is why the answer here has to be 1 and 4 next we have a fact of the day and today we want to discuss about a very interesting phrase called subaltern school Now, what exactly do we mean by subaltern school, and what is the thinking behind this? See, the word subaltern basically means any class of people who were subjected to the hegemony of another. So, the class of people who were dominated by another class, class of people who were forced to do something by a more powerful class. That was the subaltern class. Now, recently, historian Ranjit Guha has passed away. he was considered as the biggest name of subaltern school in india that is why this philosophy this ideology or this phrase has become relevant now this subaltern school has been used in a lot of south asian studies literature it attempts to give a voice to the subordinated sections of the society those who usually have been dominated by the others Amongst the other historians who have been writing in the subaltern school include David Arnold, Gautam Bhadra, Dipesh Chakrabarti, Parth Chatterjee, David Hardiman, and Gyanendra Pandey. Before the subaltern school became mainstream, 
some of the other schools which were in vogue included eurocentrism which were dominated by the concern of the native elites so they mainly talked from the point of view of the elite class there has also been some criticism of the subaltern school saying that this doesn't present the clear picture they have also not written accurately about the struggle between the dominant classes and the other classes this brings us to the end of today's daily quiz video also reminding you tomorrow we will not have the daily quiz because hindu newspaper is not expected to be released tomorrow because today is labor day so the next edition of the daily quiz will be day after tomorrow thank you so much have a good day ahead bye bye jai hind